Today at Speedy's Garage, we're going to connect our LC1 wideband to a Diablo Sport Trinity so that we can log air fuel ratio with all of the other PIDs from the car. I recently upgraded to the Trinity from a Predator so that I could eliminate having to carry the laptop in the car for data logging. You can get a 2.5 millimeter stereo jack. I got this one from DigiKey and it's part number CP2204 dash ND and it's a 90 degree obviously 2.5 millimeter stereo jack it's got three wires it's got a common ground it's got an analog input one and analog input two and it plugs into the bottom of the trinity in that jack for this modification you're going to need a soldering iron some solder heat shrink wire strippers and cutters and a couple of zip ties on the 2.5 millimeter stereo plug, the tip will be input one. Underneath the first black ring will be input two. And then the bottom will be the ground. So I wanted to figure out which wire corresponded to input one and input two. So I've hooked my multimeter up. I've set it to the continuity setting. And we should hear a beep. So we know that that red wire is input one. And that'll make the black wire, the thin black wire, input two, and this will be ground. Now, if you followed my performance gauge install video, you can go exactly to the same point I am and just remove your lower dash panel there. It takes about two seconds to get that off. You'll need to remove the small trim piece, the lower kick panel, and the um, trim that goes along the bottom of the driver's side door. And then it's just a couple of Phillips head screws and this panel will drop out. Disconnect your uh, light switch. You can leave the hood latch connected. And you want to get access to your ground wire that you used for your LC1. You want these um, gauges or the uh, uh, analog inputs to the Trinity grounded to that same point so that you don't get any kind of voltage shift or anything like that. And then your red wire, as we showed on the bench over there with the continuity meter, that's your analog input one on that 2.5 millimeter stereo jack. We're going to connect that to the analog output of the LC1. And since my brown wire from the analog output of the LC1 goes to my Aero Force interceptor gauge, this is gonna be output number two from the LC1, and I'm gonna connect it to input number one on the 2.5 millimeter stereo jack. And you'll need a soldering iron to do this, and I can't exactly hold the camera and solder, but uh, all I'm gonna do is solder the black wire here and the red wire to the yellow wire and be sure you have your heat shrink ready to uh, put over top of those. So there are soldered wires. I got the uh, yellow and red connected up and then I put the black on this big bundle of grounds. And now I'm just going to cover those with some heat shrink. And now there's all the wires bundled back out of the way. And now I just need to uh, figure out how I want to run the 2.5 millimeter cable out. Um, I'm probably going to want to have it put up most of the time except when I'm data logging, so I'm thinking I might kind of set it somewhere inside of that foam uh, insulator there, and then I can reach up through the hood latch area to pull it out when I need it. And there it is all buttoned up. No extra screws or parts laying around, so we must have done it right. Now we need to program the analog output of the LC1 to be air-fuel ratio. By default, analog output 2 which we have running to our interceptor is set for standard air fuel ratio wideband. Analog output one, which we just connected to our uh, 2.5 millimeter stereo jack, is set up by default to be a narrow band. So all you have to do is make it match what it has for analog output two, which is zero volts, air fuel ratio 7.35, 5 volts, air fuel ratio 22.39. Make sure use air fuel ratio is selected. And to connect your laptop to the LC1 to program it, you hook up the USB to serial adapter, plug it into the out connector of the LC1. Make sure that the in connector has the Terminator plug installed. And then just start the LM programmer software. So now we're going to come in here, go to analog output one, use air fuel ratio, tell this to be zero, Oops. 
zero. This is going to be 7.35. Change this to 5. Make that 22.39. Say program. I want to give you a couple of tips with this LM programmer software that will help make the readings from the LC1 more accurate. You can go into LM Programmer, Analog Output 1, click on Advanced, set the response speed to one-third of a second. That'll help average the LC1 readings over that third of a second and help your graph look more clean. And you can also change this warm-up output volts to be 5. And that means when the LC1 is warming up, it will output 5 volts on the analog 1 output. And you can check this to make sure you're not getting any line loss. And if you are, you can make adjustments as necessary to the uh, upper and lower values on the Trinity to make sure your air fuel is as accurate as possible. Now, if it's only off by a tenth of a volt or something like that, I wouldn't worry about it. But if it's off, you know, two tenths, three tenths, you need to account for that in your setting. So your lows and high will no longer be 7.35 and 22.39. You'd have to make adjustments for that. Now what I've done is I've created just a temporary um, gauge layout. And I've selected analog input one volts as the first gauge and spark advance as the second. Like I said, anytime you use your analog input, you have to have a uh, OBD2 supplied pit as well. And when you first fire up the car, the LC1 goes into warm up mode, and we should see around 5 volts. So let's see what it looks like. So I'm at about 4.85, 4.86 volts. That's really close to five. So that's really not enough to make any adjustments. Because that means the air fuel, if it's actually 14.7, it'll read 14.6 or 14.8. So it's a tick off, which is uh, not enough to worry about. If you had a lot of line loss in your voltage reading to the Trinity, this is how you can calculate a new upper bound so that the air fuel reading is more accurate. We know the LC1 puts out 22.39 for air fuel ratio at 5 volts and 7.35 air fuel ratio at 0 volts. The distance between these two, where you subtract the lower from the upper, that's going to give you 15.04. That's the range. Now we take the range, 15.04, divide it by the volts you see when your LC1 is outputting 5. So in my case, it saw 4.85, meaning I have a line loss of 0.15. So divide 15.04 by 4.85, that gives you 3.10 air fuel ratio points per volt. 5 volts, which is what it's expecting, times 3.10 equals 15.5. That's our new range. The lower bound doesn't change. So you take 15.5, add it to 7.35, that gives you your new upper boundary, which is 22.85. So in my case, for my Trinity to read as, as accurately as possible, I would use 7.35 for the lower bound and 22.85 for the upper instead of 22.39. Now that we've got our wiring all completed, you want to go ahead and hook up your Trinity to your car with the OBD2 port as well as your 2.5 millimeter stereo jack. And you're going to go into options. You're going to go into analog input configuration, add a new parameter, we're going to give it a name, and we're going to call it AFR for air fuel ratio, say OK, and we're going to select an input channel, we use the red wire on our cable so we're going to choose channel 1, now it wants the units, take out volts that it defaults to and put in percent for air fuel ratio. Say OK. 
Now it wants the lower bound, which is the minimum that it's going to show. And for the LC1, the minimum is 7.350. Say OK. Now it wants the upper. This is your range, obviously. And on the LC1, it's 22.390. Say OK. Make sure your settings are correct and click Continue. Click Back. And now we can start a log and take a look at it. Now that we have the analog input configured, we can add it to a gauge layout. So with the car running, go to Logging. Create a new log. Empty layouts, what I'm going to pick for this demonstration, but you could actually add this to one of your other layouts if you have some created already. Say continue, edit, add a new gauge, small digital is what I'm going to pick, and we want to choose analog input and then scroll down to our AFR that we created. And now for this to work, for the analog inputs to work, you also have to have an OBD2 supplied PID on the same gauge layout. So we're going to hit edit, add a new gauge. I'll do a small radial. And um, we'll pick engine RPM. Now you can save this. Click the X. Say yes. I'm going to call it test. Say OK. Now we have that gauge layout saved. So now we can create a new log. We can pick test and it saved that gauge layout for us. Click record and you can either record it with, with a log, actually records a log file, or you can just watch it. So we're just going to watch it for the demonstration. And there you go. We have our RPMs and we have our air fuel ratio. And at idle, you're always going to be around 14.5 to 14.7, or you should be if it's working correctly. You can stop that, exit, go back. And if you just want to watch the gauge, you don't really want to make a log, you can go to monitoring. Choose your gauge layout you created. And now it's just monitoring without the option to record. So that's all there is to it. It would be nice to be able to record AFR with the rest of your PIDs for data logging. You can find more Challenger information on my website, www.speediesgarage.net.